Hey, future respiratory therapist, we're going to have a discussion here um, on bi-level slash APRV, another one. There's already several videos posted over this stuff, but we're going to post another one trying to clear up some specific questions. These questions come from Justin Jamadre, and first of all, I want to tell you, Justin, congratulations on passing your RRT. I'm excited for you. I'm proud of you, and I know your, 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 your classmates and your instructors and everybody you've been working with to get you to this point are all so proud of you. So congratulations there. If you recently passed your RRT, let me know because I want to be able to congratulate you. So don't hesitate to put a comment and say, hey, pass my RRT. No questions at this time because you passed your RRT and you just want to go to work, right? So I get that. Go get your license and go be great doing the job that you know how to do. Now the question here is several fold. So we're talking about by level and the question is, in bi-level, do we use sedation? The question is, do we set a low PEEP or do we go with no PEEP? And how do we set our time low and our time high? Now, when you start talking about this, this is challenging because this is a challenging question because my some people equate bi-level and APRV as being the same thing. And you need to understand that that... That they don't have to be the same thing. APRV is a very specific type of mechanical ventilation that allows for a very short release of pressure and then immediately back up to peep high. So if we're talking APRV, that kind of changes the conversation here. You can also set by level to look much more like just the standard pressure control ventilation where you have you know, a one-to-one IDE ratio, but you're allowing the patient to take spontaneous breaths on top of peep high and then on top of peep low. So let me show you what that would look like, okay? So let's talk about bi-level here. Bi-level. So if you, if you set it up like traditional pressure control, then you're going to have a peep set, let's just say plus 10, and then you have an inspiratory pressure of plus 20 so this is going to be 30 okay so 30 so the vent will do something like this peep high drops down to peep low back up to peep high back down to peep low now this is by level it will allow you to set it up like this and i've seen facilities who operate it like pressure control this is no different than pressure control either acpc or simv pressure control it's all the same thing. You have a peep, you rise up here, you hold this eye time for, I don't know, let's say you're on a respiratory rate of 20. Then your total cycle time equals three seconds. Now, right now, if you don't know how I got three seconds, you need to go back and watch my video over time cycles. Okay, so inspiratory time, expiratory time, total cycle time, those type of things. So we can calculate it. I'll put a link to it at the top of this video, okay? So a respiratory rate of 20 equals a total cycle time of 3 seconds. I got that by dividing 60 seconds by 20 breaths. And that equals 3 seconds, right? Now, if you put this person in pressure control and you put an inspiratory, if you had a peep of 10 and an inspiratory pressure of 30, with an I time equals 1.5, then 1.5 is exactly half of your total cycle time, which means you're going to spend 1.5 in time in pressure low also. Okay. Now, what makes bi-level separate from pressure control is that if you're in, in assist control pressure control or SIMV pressure control, the pressure comes up and the pressure goes down. Now, we know that the patient can initiate another breath in this range right here, right? But they can't initiate another breath at the pressure high. So when this pressure is holding for the set eye time, there is no spontaneous breathing. But when we go to bi-level, okay, then we rise up here and we allow the patient to breathe spontaneously at peep high. And then we go to peep low and we allow the patient to breathe spontaneously at peep low. These newer modes, bi-level, APRV, even 
uh, pressure control SIMV plus on the Drager, what they allow for is the patient to use their diaphragm to spontaneously breathe at any point of the breath. Traditionally, if a patient wants a breath during the inspiratory phase, they can't take one because the breath is already being initiated. But these newer modes are saying, hey, let's let the patient breathe on top of PPI and let's let them breathe on on top of peep low, which is typically what we see. This is a newer concept. Okay, so this is what bi-level does. It allows you to breathe at peep high and it allows you to breathe at peep low. That's the first thing. If you're gonna run it like this, then you 100% have got to have some peep low set. Otherwise, your patient will de-recruit. If you go back down to zero, if you start here and go up, and come down and go back to zero, there's going to be de-recruitment happening at the peep of zero level. You don't want that to happen. So if you're running by level like a traditional pressure control mode, such as this, then you do not want uh, to have a peep of zero, so you do want some level of peep set. Okay? Now Justin, if you're watching this and you're going, it's not my question, then hang with me because I'm about to get to it. Okay? Now when it comes to sedation, if you're running it like this with a rate of 20 and 1 to 1 I to E ratio with a peep of 10 and an inspiratory pressure of 30 or a delta P of 20, then this hopefully will establish a minute ventilation that is correct for your patient. So the patient may not need to breathe spontaneously. So can you have this patient on sedation? Sure. But if that was the case, why not just put them in pressure control? If you're going to sedate them, especially if you're going to paralyze them, then why go to bi-level? Why not just put them in pressure control with a one-to-one -one ratio? There's not any difference, right? And so I always fall into this, like why are we in bi-level when our patient is sedated and paralyzed? The point of bi-level and the point of APRV is to allow for spontaneous breathing. Doesn't mean they're not ever sedated. That's not what I'm saying. Sometimes these patients get, get sedated, but in bi-level, when it looks like pressure control, such as this, there's no reason to be in bi-level when you could just be in straight pressure control. Okay? Now, they're the same thing, so it doesn't matter. It's like having a patient sedated and paralyzed in AC, or you could sedate and paralyze them in SIMV, volume control. It's the same, they're the same modes. They're operating by the same thing. This mode is, this mode at the pressure high, okay, is time triggered and I time cycled. Time high cycled or I time cycled, period, okay? That's when you're using bi-level light pressure control. Now let's switch it because I think the conversation here needs to apply more to APRV. Okay, because that's the bigger, that's the bigger, more complicated understanding. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to put bi-level up here and then in parentheses I'm going to say APRV. Okay, now when we talk about APRV, you have something very different happening. You have a pressure that goes up, you hold it for a long time, you drop down, and then you come right back up. Okay? This looks more like APRV. Now, the thing about APRV is one, do I need to have my patient sedated? No, you don't. Can you? If you have enough drops, then you can, but you have to have enough drops to aid in CO2 removal to maintain a normal acid-base balance. If you don't, then you need those spontaneous breaths up top here, like such, to help remove CO2. So that's the breakdown on that. So does my patient need to be sedated? Studies have shown that they can be, and you can ventilate in this mode. But if it allows for spontaneous breathing, why do they need to be sedated? There's various reasons, and if that's the case, then sedate them and ventilate them. But if those various reasons aren't met, then let the patient breathe spontaneously throughout this. Okay, That'll prevent the diaphragm atrophy from happening, from not being used. 
and promote better outcomes, hopefully, with your patient being weaned sooner than later. Like everybody knows that sedation and paralytics equate to longer vent days, higher ICU days, and longer hospital stays, period. So if we don't have to sedate and we can go into a mode that allows for spontaneous breathing, then that's okay. Let them do it, okay? Now, the other thing you want to know is do we set PEEP or not? In APRV or in bi-level being used like APRV, then the answer is no. You do not set a PEEP. It doesn't mean you fall to zero. If you look here, I didn't go to zero here, did I? Zero would be here, but I, sh I stopped short of zero. Because what you're doing is you're intentionally air trapping. And this is going to answer your question as to what do I set my time low or my time high to. So when we look at this, we draw a flow graphic and it's going to look something like this. Okay, now the time low is this time here in this gap. So this little spot right here, this equals time low. From here to here is time low. Also on your flow graphic from here to here. Okay, now if you're looking at the adult critical care review from Ketter and they say 0.5 seconds to one second, if you take the... Um, time controlled adaptive approach or the TCAV approach, what they're saying is you adjust your time low. So time low equals 75% of peak expiratory flow. So what you have to do is you have to analyze what this number right here is. So let's say this is 80 liters per minute. That's peak expiratory flow. Multiply that times 0.75, you will get 60 liters per minute. So then you got to come over here and you adjust your time low to where this allows for a peak expiratory flow to reach 80, fall to 60, and then the next breath happens. Now what we know when we think about our airway graphics is that any time the flow doesn't come back to zero, it equals air trapping. So we are intentionally air trapping at this point. Okay? When you set it at 75% of peak expiratory flow, and this is easy math, says 80 liters per minute, you want to set your time low to the point to where the next breath starts as flow decays to 60 liters per minute. What that's going to do is to create some intentional air trapping, which is going to equate to intrinsic PEEP, and you're going to see that here. So look, if we were going all the way to zero, we would have come all the way down here, but we didn't. We stopped short of that, and we didn't actually reach zero. So just today we did this. We were falling from a P high of 30 to a, to a, on the pressure waveform, it looked like we were falling to about five centimeters of water pressure, but... When we did an expiratory hold, we saw where we had an intrinsic peep of about 10 centimeters of water pressure. So you see, we're not really going to zero, even though we have our peep low set to zero. Our time low, which is what we're locking, or what we're setting, is not allowing for this alveolar pressure to actually reach a peep low of zero. And that allows for the alveoli to stay open for the most part, to reduce, to release, to ex expire, to release some CO2, but not fully expire, not to, not to de-recruit. That's the key here, is you don't want a time low so long that this comes back to zero. Because at this point, your peep's going to be at zero, you're going to de-recruit, and you're going to have a longer time low okay so the answer to your question is how do i know where to set my time low it's you look at peak expiratory flow multiply it times 0.75 and that'll give you about where you should have your time low set that's when you're using the time controlled adaptive approach now the reason they're calling it time adaptive time controlled adaptive approach is because as the patient's lung compliance improves you will adjust time low 
to allow for a longer time low. You don't ever just set somebody in a vent mode and walk away and leave them until you extubate them. That makes no sense. You're constantly making adjustments. So as your patient's lungs are becoming more compliant, then you will see that this time low goes from here to here. And your 75% mark will change. Okay? And that's key. That's key in understanding because you have to understand that, that not all lungs are the same. So as they get better, your time low should change to allow for adequate exhalation of bulk CO2 removal, but still not allowing for de-recruitment to happen. And that's the biggest thing there. Okay, So no PEEP in APRV, but intentional auto-PEEP in APRV based off of your time low setting of 75% of your peak expiratory flow. Some places probably operate off of 50% expiratory flow, and that's fine too. As long as you're not allowing for complete alveolar de-recruitment. You don't want those alveoli to be completely empty. And you do that by not allowing your flow pattern to come to zero. If it comes to zero, your time low is too long. Okay? So Justin, I hope this answers your questions. Sedation or no sedation? Depends on the patient. But in these modes, sedation or, or spontaneous breathing is welcomed. We want the patient using a diaphragm, and it's not a bad thing, okay? So I err on the side of no sedation. If you're going to use sedation, you have to adjust your time high to allow for more drops because this is your only means for ventilation, or these drops. So you either have to have a higher rate which will affect your total cycle time, which will decrease your time high. Or if you're using the Avia, you just set a smaller time high and that creates <clears throat> more drops. But your time low should always be set. Okay. When it comes to setting your pressure high, how do I know when to set this, where to set this? You're going to look at the mode you came out of. If you were in pressure control, you'll want to use your mean airway pressure as an indicator. Go two to three centimeters above that mean airway pressure. If you're coming out of volume control, going into bi-level slash APRV, then use your plateau pressure as your starting point to know where to start your pressure high. Okay, Justin, congratulations, man. You are now a registered respiratory therapist. I hope this answered your questions. I hope I clarified some things for you. And if you're watching this video and you're not Justin and you have questions, put them in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this video. Hit the subscribe button and click on the links above so that you can catch up if some of this stuff doesn't make sense. Take care.